All right. And you guys yeah. probably all have to say, okay, and I've got it or something. Okay. Right. It's being recorded. Okay. okay. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> so, uh, and thanks again for everybody showing up tonight. I know the weather's bad in some parts of our district, and I, I just appreciate everybody being here. This is a huge number, about 56 people registered. So welcome to the uh, the grants training session. And this is what we have to do on the district level. Every club for you has been, been involved in grants. Every club has to uh, be qualified to be able to get a grant. And that's what we're here for uh, tonight. And hopefully to learn a little bit more about how to participate in the district grant program. So I would like to start out really quick and just introduce our team. And Bobby Davis is the district foundation chair. He's, he's I kind of call him our boss. So Bobby, thank you for being, he'll be presenting. And Linda Schultz, who is, is over qualifications, wave at us, Linda. She has a part, she'll be going over the forms and talk to you about what you need, your club needs to uh, do about being qualified. And Pat White, Pat White is this year's coordinator for the district grants. And she will be, um, she and her committee will be approving the grants that will be coming in on the uh, January the 31st. And she'll talk to you a little bit about the forms. And uh, also, before the evening is up, we hope to hear from Jim Roxlow. Jim will be giving us some ideas. The, the Rotary Foundation and Rotary International are looking at three different areas right now that they would like to focus on projects. Hey, hey, One, David, peace David, projects. Wait, so yes. Hey, wait a second. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody. So, David, you'll have to unmute yourself, okay? Okay, that's fine. All right, go ahead, David. Unmute yourself and talk. Okay, can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. So, Jim Roxler will be on about 7 o'clock, and he's going to be on, and he'll talk to us a little bit about uh, some ideas for clubs to do district grants that, uh, that pertain to uh, promoting peace. Cindy Gammons, if she comes on, I would love to. She's going to talk to us a little bit about some projects on empowering girls. And um, we don't have anybody to speak to the, anyone to speak to this, but you know, there's always projects that would help us with uh, uh, mental health. And that's another thing that we're having a lot of issues with right now. So I'm ready to start the uh, PowerPoint, Greg. Yeah, I'll be right there. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I've got to. Um... Sorry, I was distracted, and I'm. Uh... Greg, I appreciate you getting making sure we have everybody's name. That's important to know. Yeah, one second. I got to get it into present mode. Well, well you're doing that. we want to make sure that we're conscious about everyone's time tonight. So we're going to, at the last training session, I think I talked too much. So I'm going to try not to talk as much and let everybody else do their part. Someone's not, someone unmuted themselves or something. There's some talking going on in the background. It's, it's feeding back to Pat White. She's yeah. showing up yellow around her. Oh. Is that White. where it is? Okay. Yeah. You're seeing that, but that you're not yes. seeing. Yes. I, I can see the PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. What else you need? Oh. Okay, I was just going to see if you wanted to put the, the the PowerPoint on the full screen. Okay, well, I'm sounds trying. good. Well, I'm ready for the next the next uh, slide, please. Okay, so the goal for today is to understand some of the basics. We're going to go over what the timeline is for district grants, how they're funded, how to manage a grant, proper stewardship qualifying your club, and that's what we're here for tonight, and creating a project. We're going to talk a little bit about the application and implementing your project. 
Okay, next slide. This is what our agenda is. These are gonna be the people that will be presenting. Bobby will be doing the overview, club qualification. I'll be working with Linda. She'll be doing most of it, Linda Schultz. Creating a project, some of the basics, applying for a district grant, Pat will go over the forms, and project implementation. Next slide. So Bobby, District Foundation Chair, Bobby Davis. Well, up. good evening. It's great to see everybody here. I really appreciate everybody, everybody being here with us this evening, taking the time out from all the other things that are going on this holiday weekend. Want to do uh, just a uh, bit of overview of the uh, district grant program, and then following that, we'll get into uh, a good bit more detail. So, Greg, let's go to the next slide. We're going to we're going to go through the district grant timeline for twenty four twenty five. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm uh, did that change? No. Sure. I'm sorry. Yep. I... No. Other way. That work? There we go, right there. Okay. Uh, just a, a note for everyone, the district grant timeline and the other forms uh, that you'll, that'll be discussed tonight are all available on the, uh, on the uh, district website under uh, the foundation and then district grants. So you can, uh, download any of them that uh, that you want to. We are gonna go through some in detail. The district grant timeline, I wanted to just run through that. Now's the time that the PE and the club should be identifying projects. Uh, maybe you already have, but uh, they'll become clear why we're doing it right now in just a second. Uh, the club does have to become qualified, submit a district grant. We're going more details on that later, but it's basically two individuals, at least two individuals attend the training and that uh, the club submits a memorandum of understanding and a club uh, qualification plan that uh, is approved by the district. Uh, we accept ap applications are actually already being accepted and we'll accept them through January the 31st. And then we'll start the process of reviewing and approving those uh, on February the 1st. Okay, Greg. You seeing that or not the big one? Are you seeing the then big what, slide? Uh, what happens then once we get all the applications of the clubs and uh, they're approved, we put all these applications, uh, actually David does since he's handling, he's the grant coordinator for us, bundles all the applications and we submit one district grant uh, application to the Rotary Foundation for approval. And that's that happens in May. Uh, Rotary Foundation, once we answer any questions they may have, uh, they'll approve the, the bundle district grants. And then we notify the clubs that they can begin their project. Uh, please don't don't begin a district grant that you're uh, you're doing until you get approval from the district to start. And then we go to project implementation. Okay, Greg. Couple of fine points here. Progress reports are gonna be due midway through the project, but no later than October the 1st, uh, 24. And there is a template on online for, for that report. 
as well as there's one on for final report, which we'll go through in more detail tonight. But final reports due by May 31st, 2025. And uh, they'll reiterate this later, but receipts for all expenditures must be, be included. Once the final report's approved by the district, then the district will uh, disperse the funds to, uh, to the clubs. Okay, okay, I'm, I've got mine up here, so what's next? Okay, I wanna talk about grant basics just a little. Uh, the grant, district grants, they must be hum humanitarian, but they're not limited to the Rotary Foundation seven areas of focus. We'll review those in just a minute. Uh, the grants can be for work locally or internationally. We uh, Every year we typically have a couple of uh, district grants that are, are international projects. Uh, sometimes people will do the, a district grant in an international area uh, that they're planning on or thinking about doing a global grant. And this provides them an opportunity to work with the local people and develop uh, relationships. Uh, the district grants for next year are funded by donations from to the annual fund from Rotary year 21-22, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a couple of slides. So, Greg, if you go on, we'll just briefly go over the areas of focus again. Uh, let me get mine up so I can read better. You got, I'll just read them off peace building and conflict resolution, disease prevention and treatment, water sanitation and hygiene, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, and community economic development. And the last one that was added very in the last few years is the environment. So that's the seven areas of focus. There are what's called uh, areas of focus policy statements that you can download from the Rotary. Okay, Greg, let's do the next one. Talk a bit about the funding and how it works. We said that the 24-25 funding based on annual fund donations from 21-22 and they totaled seven hundred and sixty-five thousand four ninety-nine. And I'm not going to read all these numbers to you, but I talked about what happens uh, at the end of that three years. The the money the money then is taken out of investments. Forty-seven and a half percent comes back to the district, and forty-seven and a half percent is controlled by the trustees of the Rotary Foundation. And go into to the world fund. Once the the forty seven and a half that comes to present that comes to us, it is district controls. There's two different uh, pieces of that. We can use up to half of that for district grants, and that's really what we're talking about tonight. So uh, we can use up to one hundred eighty one thousand plus for district grants in twenty four twenty five. And that's a, it's a good year for grants. We had, uh, uh, I think it was a million dollar dinner, I guess, in the 21, 22, which up the, uh, the giving for that year. The other uh, district designated fund or DDF is used for a variety of things. We make uh, donations, for example, to Polio Plus, for example. We did matching dollars for the Pol uh, Purple Pinky Donut Day. And we just recently transferred seventy-five thousand dollars to uh, uh, to Polio Plus from the district. It can also be used for sporting peace centers and other peace projects, uh, low, uh, scholars, etc. And uh, I think let's see anything else. There is some other money. Uh, that comes into the uh, to the world fund. Uh, maybe donations made directly to RI for, for or to the Rotary Foundation to 
support a particular grant area or a particular grant. Uh, we also have earnings from the endowment fund, uh, which is the legacy fund for the for Rotary. And earnings from that uh, are distributed depending on what the donor uh, requests. Uh, we have money that comes back to our district designated fund from uh, from the endowment fund earnings because of the way the donors have selected the distribution. So let's move on and talk about grant management a little bit. I don't want to take too much of your time and get down into real details in a, in a few minutes. But grant management overall is, is very important. Uh, it ensures you have proper financial controls in place, which safeguards donor funds. It's guided by the humanitarian educational pr principles and the fulfills the objectives based on the community assessment, which is very important. Uh, we've had projects in the past, not necessarily our district, but around, around the world where projects have been done without uh, consulting the, the community and the community did, didn't really want whatever it was and uh, it didn't work out. So community assessment's essential so you understand what the needs are and so, so if the project meets the needs of, of the beneficiaries. Okay, uh, and I think, oh, stewardship. Talk about hey, stewardship just a second. That'll be the next slide. Hey, Bobby, are you seeing the full slide or are you only seeing the small slide? Small slide. All right, let me stop and start again because it should be, I don't know what happened, so let me reshare. I don't know what happened, so I apologize. Bobby, you mentioned the amount that we have. We're uh, this year. We've been having the last couple of years. We've been having about one hundred and forty-five, hundred and fifty-five thousand. So one hundred and eighty-three is quite a bit more. I think that is from the million-dollar, uh, the results from that uh, fund campaign. Okay, uh, let me talk just a minute about stewardship, and it is. Stewardship is fine, responsible management and oversight of the funds. Clearly, throughout the, the project, we need Rotarian supervision. Uh, it can't, it's, we don't want to just be in a check writing business, but rather have Rotarian involvement and control of what goes on. Uh, follow standard business practices that you all do in your normal, normal work. Uh, if there are any irregularities, we're required to report those to the Rotary Foundation, and then we have to also address those to, to correct them. Well, the projects need to be implemented as approved. If you have a project and partway through it, you decide that, well, maybe we don't need this element, but we need to add that one. Please don't go ahead and do it, and it's going to affect the grant funds. Please don't go ahead and do that without coming back to uh, to the district for approval. Financial records will be reviewed at the end and that part of the, the uh, financial report. And we're subject to audit by the Rotary Foundation. Although the only audit we've had so far was uh, recently we were audit on a global grant, uh, but we're subject to audit to that at any time. And it's important the, the reports be submitted in a timely fashion. Uh, we can't close out a grant from uh, a district grant uh, with the Rotary Foundation until all the final reports for the the district grants that are within that that bundle grant are completed, and uh, we will not be able to get funds for the following year until that's done. So getting the reports in in a timely fashion is very important. Now, uh, hey, Bobby, 
Bob, you got a question no, no, no. about where's the yes. where's the other five percent go? You got forty seven and a half. Oh, I'm sorry. The other, five, the other five percent goes to management of the Rotary Foundation to cover its cost. Uh, earlier in the foundation's life, uh, the the earning the earnings from the uh, the three years were were sufficient to cover cover the uh, the cost of operation of the foundation. Over, over time with changes in the program and inflation that has proved not to be adequate. So 5% of the, uh, of, I'll call it the principal is retained by the Rotary Foundation to support uh, their staff and computer operations, et cetera. Thank you, Greg. Okay, with that, that's all I have right now. I will turn the Floor over to Linda and David for club qualification. Okay. Hey, hey, I did... David Roxlow just showed up. Oh, great. I was going to see if he was. So if you will go ahead and uh, let Jim in, and we're going to give Jim some time to give our club some ideas on what we can think about as we're preparing for choosing these grants for the year, maybe some projects about promoting peace. Jim? Okay, so you don't do you need the slides? No, just hold up on the slides right there, and then Jim Jim can just talk and give us some ideas. I don't think he needs a slide, so but I need to unmute. I need to figure out how there to do you that. go. There you they will see your face. So Thank who's you, Jim. so who's Jim Roxlow, David? No. Jim. Well, I think we should well, just introduce him. He's a past district governor and he chairs our global grants, and he is also represents our district with our peace initiative. So Jim, did I do a good job on that? That's just fine. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm what's called a positive peace activator and nobody knows what that is, including me. We're trying to figure it out. But anyway, um, I, I, peace is, a, is an interesting thing in Rotary because we've always been involved in peace, but trying to do projects in peace is sometimes a little more difficult. Um, and one way to look at it is that if you uh, if you think about things, particularly in the sense of positive peace, what are the things that make us more um, more susceptible to peaceful interactions? Then then uh, there's a little bit of study involved, and a and a whole lot more thinking about what you're already doing, because almost any project can be a peace project if you just put a, a little twist on it that says, let's think about whether we're including everybody in the neighborhood. Let's think about, about whether everybody's opinions are, are considered. Let's, uh, uh, let's think about anybody who can contribute. Have, they, have we accepted that kind of a contribution? Then there's a, there are an awful lot of things that you already do in your community that can turn into peace projects. Um, uh, my club, for example, we spent, uh, I won't even say how many years because I'll probably get it wrong, David, uh, quite a few years building a, a playground and we're wrapping it up this year. And one of the things that we're trying to do um, as a peace builder club is theme our playground as a peace themed playground for the kids that go there. What what can we do to make it so that so that they learn something about interacting with other kids and things like that and in, in um, uh, in their uh, at their time in the playground, and so uh, maybe a, maybe a little bit for the parents too, you know, because it's a neighborhood playground as well as well as a school playground, and so a lot of uh, a lot of families bring their kids there all the time. So anyway, it's uh, uh, there there are many other things like that. Traditional uh, peace focus for uh, for Rotary is finding peace fellows, and we have money that that is available for peace fellows we don't have to pay for them and a, and uh so um i what we have to do is find them we have to nominate people and uh, and peace fellows aren't necessarily going around with a sign on their head saying i'm interested in peace but they they might be uh they might be a policeman they might be a school teacher they might be anybody in your society that would be interested in, in having this kind of a focus to the work that they do. 
So um, uh, any club can find somebody, and if you can if you can nominate somebody, we got people ready to uh, to help train them and get them ready to to apply. It's uh, it's one of the world's very best scholarships. I mean, it's a it's really really prestigious. The acceptance rate for people who apply is only one in twelve, and that's after they weeded out the ones that aren't qualified. One out of twelve candidates don't get accepted. So it's um, it is pretty competitive, uh, but uh, but everybody who goes through it really uh, really enjoys the process. So anyway, it's a good thing to do. Um, I haven't haven't begun to cover the the waterfront. There are so many things you can do at peace. Anybody anybody have any questions? <laughs> So Jim, how would we? Be, I know that we're trying to get peace builder clubs. Sure. How do, how would your club become a peace builder club? We yes, we became a peace builder club by forming a committee. We, without any trouble at all, got six people to join the committee, and then we said, "Well, how many people are willing to spend twenty bucks to to join the Rotary Action Group for Peace?" And you only need to get two. Once you've got two people that are, have uh, sent in their twenty bucks, then you can become a peace committee an official peace builder committee. And uh, you have to have some kind of a project, but uh, but that can be almost anything. And, uh, um, you know, there's some standards, but they're really pretty simple. The uh, Rotary Action Group for Peace is like other Rotary Action Groups. It's formed by Rotarians in, in order to coordinate that kind of activity. They have a big uh, world map where all of the peace builder clubs are. And I think we have about five in our district now. Um, I don't know who they are even, but as soon as we get a few more, we're going to form a. Okay. So got an echo. And you know, Jim, I know that in our district, a couple of, of uh, projects that come to my mind, even as simple as a um, uh, anti-bullying in schools or promoting the four-way test that students can um in the schools where the teachers can talk about the four-way test in relationship with uh, about peace and how to get along. So, Jim, thank you. I think Jim's frozen. And so I think we're ready to get back on the PowerPoint. Okay. Thank right. you, Jim, so thank much. You. Thank you for coming. Anybody tonight. who has any questions about it, let me know. Okay, thank you. Okay, club qualification. Is that that's not me, is it? Okay. So our district has to be qualified with the Rotary Foundation to be able to uh, be able to even uh, work with the grants program. So then that then we are we get qualified and then our clubs become qualified. And I'm going to turn it over to Linda Schultz and she's going to talk a little bit about how your club can be qualified. Linda, next slide. Linda, you, there you go. There you go. Uh, could you advance to the uh, actual forms at the club oh. qualification All right. and memorandum of understanding? Yeah, hang on. Let me get the form up. Okay. You want the MOU? Yes. Uh -huh, please. All right. Hang on a second. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so let me, so I've got this up to 175% so people can see it, okay? And so I'll have to move it down as we go. Okay, thanks. Uh the Club Qualification and Memorandum of Understanding. It's a six-page document that must be completed if you're submitting a grant or if your club's participating in a multi-grant uh, project. 
All forms are on the website at uh, Rotary District 6780 under the grant tab. And they must be typed to submit. Please don't write them. The forms are also a Word document and it will expand as you uh, type it. Before you start completing the form though, it's a good idea to review all six pages. The MOU tells you what your club needs to do and the club qualification plan tells you tells the district what your club is going to do. The club qualification and the MOU are used to ensure the proper grant management policies are implemented for the grant. The person completing the grant doesn't have to be the president or even a president elect. It just needs to be somebody who can be responsible for making sure the paperwork is correct and completed in a timely manner. Remember, you will not get RI funding until the project is completed and all reports have been approved. On the MOU, uh, the very first thing you need to be, able to be sure and do is put your club name on it because lots of towns and areas have a morning club and a noon club. And, you know, I don't know which club it is. So please put your name on the form. There are a lot of... Uh, club qualification is an RI form also. So it's very important that you follow what it says. Trying to where do you want me on the where do you want me on the form? Let's see. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Up up where you were just previously. Just uh up there you go. Okay. Uh, clubs uh, should include the following information in their signed MOU. This is one reason that you need to know what you what you have to put on the on the other on the forms and things. You're going to need to know what your last year's annual giving was and what your goal is for this year for the 23-24 year. And you need to confirm uh, in uh, Rotary well or in DAC DB. Uh, that you have all of your goals uh, entered in. Uh, be sure and put your club mailing address for receipts of grant funds. Okay. And qualification may, can be suspended or revoked for misuse of management. So you need to be sure and read this MOU and make sure that you're following it. The club officers also have a responsibility. They need to appoint at least one club member to implement, manage, and maintain club qualifications. We need to avoid any actual perceived conflict of interest. And this, this will come as, up as one of the questions on your uh, club qualification form. So please take these questions or these, this information to heart. Your finance, you need to have a financial plan. It doesn't have to be anything such as what's in QuickBooks or what you may be used to if you're in it, work in accounting. It can be something very similar to just a, a spreadsheet that gives all the details on it. And Pat will most likely go over some of these details with you. You do need to have a, a chart of account or a set of accounts and things like that. Uh, then the bank accounts, a bank account is only required on a global grant. You do not have to have a um, separate bank account on, on a district grant. But uh, a few years ago, our, we had five clubs in Sevier County that went together with a grant and we opened a separate bank account for the simple reason that we felt like that all five clubs needed to know what was going on. So we set up a separate account. So each club can decide how they want to handle it. but. It is not required except on a global grant. Uh, and all uh, documentation retention, you need to uh, retain your information for five years. This is something that re Rotary re requires. And it's something as simple as just putting it on a flash drive, but you may want to have several people in the club to have access to it or have this information. Uh, maybe your secretary or someone like that could keep it. 
and your records must be accessible at all times to Rotarians in the club and at the request of the district. The misuse of funds, the clubs must report any potential and real uh, misuse of management of grant funds. And this should be reported to David Carroll, our district chair. Also on item number eight, under special items, Foundation giving for your 2022-23 and your foundation annual giving uh, goal for this year, or for the 23-24 year. And then have all go, be sure that you have all your goals entered into DACDB uh, so that we will know that you have to, because you have to answer that question, yes or no, and we want a yes on there. Also, be sure and include uh, your club's mailing address. And then on further down, it says on behalf of the Rotary Club of, be sure and put your club's name in there also. And uh, you do not, the uh, president and the president-elect do not have to sign the forms. Uh, you just fill out the information and you, if you email it to us, then, you know, we have it. So you don't have to actually sign it. Okay, on the club qualification plan. Okay, what, what do you want now? Club qualification plan, it's the next form. that go, it's, this, it's page number four. Oh, I've only yeah. got this and that, that's all. Oh, I just got to keep going on. There you go, that's it. Okay, here again, be sure and put your name on it. Uh, and remember that the MAU is, is it's just what what how is your club handling things and try to you know put it in terms that your what your club's doing to handle things and if you have problem with any of these questions just refer back to the MOU because really you can go back and you can find you know on a certain page that it this uh, talks about different things. And as far as the club leadership here, again, we need someone who will be a, a contact person and uh, doesn't have to be your president. It can be someone in your club. It could be like the district uh, uh, grant chair or someone like that, or someone that will be able to help. Also, uh, this item number B here, Disclose potential conflicts of interest and describe how the club will handle stewardship of funds and manage potential conflicts of interest. Well, the, the, the pat answer I get on that is N-A, none. Well, when you write the grant, you, you certainly hope that you don't have any, grant, any uh, conflicts when you first write it and research it. So please don't use N-A or none because that, that this means in the future, what can happen in the future. There's a lot of things that can pop up that you have no control over. So please, you know, just, it doesn't have to be any big uh, explanation, something just as simple. Uh, grant com committee will comply with MOU and any conflicts of, of uh, interest will be reported to the uh, district chair. So it's, it doesn't have to be long drawn out uh, explanations. Just try to make it something that, you know, is simple and that your club understands what they're supposed to do. Okay. And then you also will need to put down the two uh, members that attended the grant training and the date they attended it. Uh, on your financial management, you need to be sure and uh, have someone, uh, let's see here, maintain bank accounts, you know, make, please make copies of everything because Pat will go over that with you because it will be really important when you do uh, start to file everything with her. Okay, the next uh, question about financial management. Uh, it shows a, the global, uh, global grants. And if you don't anticipate a global grant, then put no global grant anticipated. And if you want to put your bank information in there, that's fine. Uh, but it isn't necessary except on a global grant. So don't feel that you have to do it. 
a uh, your financial management, you need to be sure and look at the MOU and see what they're wanting you to put in there. The next question is um, about uh, have accounts and records been established? And you need to answer yes or no in this. And I hope everybody answers yes in that. Also, does your finance plan, finance plan comply with the MOU? Here again, it's a yes or no. And then the primary person responsible for maintaining these records, and we need their telephone number and email address. Also, document retention. And again, this is where you need to be sure and uh, describe how your club will handle this. Uh, it, it, here again, it tells you on your MOU how to do it. Uh, you may want to give the primary person, such as the grant share or somebody like that, you know, uh, have them to describe it. And has a record retention program been, uh, records been set up and kept? And here again, the primary person would need to be the one listed there. And then the report on the use of, uh, of your grant funds. Uh, could be a primary contact, it could be anyone, you know, uh, but it needs to be someone that could get the information and get it out uh, to you, to the uh, committee. Method of uh, reporting misuse of grant funds. Here again, uh, the club must report any potential misuse or irregularities of grant related activities to the district. How will your club do this? Well, you know, you can, uh, you need to send the grant report to David Carroll and David can work with you. And it's amazing how that he can help you work these little problems out or that, that seem like really big problems and could be a big problem uh, out in the community if not handled correctly. And um, also the club president and the club president elect will need to hear again, put their name and give their information. But they hear again, they do not have to sign it. But I know I've gone over this pretty quickly, uh, but really, if you'll just study that MOU and try to keep looking back at it, uh, I went through and I put down, okay, beside each each uh, item, I put down where, it, where I found it on the MOU so that I could refer to it easily. So, uh, you know, just try to make sure that if you have a committee or something that you put them to work and let them help you with these things. David, do you have some things to add to this? Sure, okay, and we're back to the slides, Greg. Thank you, Linda. And if you have any questions or, or problems with your form, be sure and contact Linda, and she will be glad to help you work through any questions that you have. Next slide. Okay, I just want to go back over just a few of the top, uh, the, the main points of what uh, Linda's gone over. But remember, at least two members to attend grants training, and that's what you're here for tonight. Club agrees with the club memorandum of understanding, the MOU. You've gone through that process, and the club submits that the MOU and the club qualification plan, and Linda will approve that, or her committee will. And then you're ready to submit your grant, uh, your your grant projects. So the district approves the qualification plan. Greg, I already mentioned that every club is required to um, to attend and to requalify every year. So just because your club's qualified this year doesn't mean that you can't. Uh, that you'll be uh, qualified next year. We have to go through this same process. And the reason why is because the Rotary Foundation wants to make sure that everyone understands how to use the money that people are donating. And I think that's a great, a great part of the reason we give to the Rotary Foundation. So you will uh, be sure to review last year's qualification plan. Hopefully you know where that is. And do you understand what you wrote last year? And do you, uh, and did you do what you wrote? 
and was it good enough? And be sure and look at that and improve on it, modify and resubmit your qualification plan. And most clubs that are doing grants, it becomes a system. So you'll know where the uh, you'll know where your plan was last year. You'll look at it. You'll sign the new memorandum of understanding. Next slide. Maintaining. We've already talked a little bit about that. Follow the terms of the MOU. Keep good records. Fully implement the stewardship and the grant management practices to prevent misuses. You know, we don't really have much of a problem with misuse of funds, but just be conscious about the, the funds that are being spent because those are funds that the Rotary, that people have donated and just good stewardship. Appoint a club member or a committee to manage the qualification. Greg? Next slide. I already did one. Did you do this one? What yes. MOU requirements does your club yes. already? Yeah. Yes. Next slide. Okay. So best practices and uses. Um, we want to make sure that we have good management, conflicts of interest, uh, training. That's what we're here for. Be sure to to um, to look at your the way you're you're uh, recording your funds as far as your bank accounts, financial management plan. We want to make sure that you're doing that. Document retention five years is what the requirement is for the Rotary Foundation. Uh, the reports and misuse misuse plan. If there's anything that comes up. And uh, we don't really have a, like I mentioned, we don't really have a problem with that simply because we reimburse the funds after they're spent. So we, we will not, until we feel comfortable that all the money was spent correctly, we have those receipts, then we will um, uh, re, uh, write you a check to back to the club back for the funds that were spent for the grant funds. And then after that, you'll get final approval. Greg? Okay, what's this for a question? David, so I'm David. Okay. When we submit our receipts, do we have to have canceled checks? Yes, and Pat will talk to you a little bit about that here in a minute. I don't want to steal her thunder, but she'll talk to you a little bit about what we're what we'll uh, need for um for the uh, receipts and how that works. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll turn that over to Pat here in just a moment. So, Greg, I think we're over the qualifications, creating, and now we're ready to uh, talk a little bit more about creating a project and how we're going to start thinking about our project. That'll be, um, hopefully, the applications will be ready to go on January the 31st. So creating a project. The objectives are to identify the best practices for choosing a project, develop a plan to implement your project, and understand what is needed to establish a financial management plan. And that's what we're, we're going over in this little section. What makes a successful grant project? And if we were live and we were having interaction, we would probably get a lot of good comments from each person that's there. But... Does your project or your grant project really meet a real community, the need of in the community? And I think that's something that we really need to concentrate on because just because what we think is what our community needs is maybe not what they their need really is. So I think that we need to ask and do community assessments, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Have frequent personal partner communication. Communication is very, very important. And when you're when you're partnering partnering with another organization or say the school system or um, another entity, you want to make sure and have good, good communication. There's nothing worse than having poor communication and you're needing to find out what your project, what the how the project's going, and you don't have that person giving you any information. Have implementation plans with measurable goals. I made a few notes on this, and this is what I put on that I think is uh, something to think about. A couple of clubs in our district, uh, I know one club in particular, wanted to participate, 
and a nice amphitheater that the community was uh, putting together. Well, you know, those are some of those are multi-million dollar projects. So we how does how does your club get involved with a project that's large? Find part of that project that you can that, that has a beginning and an end, something that is measurable, something that you can get a receipt for. So on this project with the amphitheater, what the club did was they paid for the sound system and they participated in the organization of that and worked in it. And that was a wonderful thing. Then the Chattanooga Club, they did this great project, um, the Miracle Field, and it was a beautiful project. It was million and a half plus dollars. I, I, I know I'm probably shortchanging. It was a big project. There's no way that the district could do a district grant. We just didn't have that much in our funds. So what we had, what the district participated in, they found a part, they found part of that project and it was the surface for the field and part of the playground equipment. So that was a three, they were, they got three dis district grants over three different years to participate in those separate projects. So they could be part, the district could be part of that project. So you need to find something that has measurable goals and outcomes. So you think about that when you're choosing a project and especially if you're involved in a larger project. Are, are, is your project sustainable beyond the life of the grant? So when the grant is finished, what's gonna happen with it? Who's gonna maintain it? That's something very important. I know that several clubs are working with um, um, community gardens. So when the community garden is built, are you going to volunteer and help take care of it? Or are you just going to leave and hope that somebody else takes care of it? So you want to make sure that it's sustainable. A lot of the clubs are doing water projects, especially international projects. Who's going to take care of the pumps and who's going to take care of the filtration systems once Rotary is installed, your club has installed those. So be sure and think about what's going to happen to your project beyond the life of the grant. Practice proper stewardship. And I think that most of us are going to do that, but take care of the funds like you would in your own business is the way I look at it. So be sure that you're using the funds correctly. Next slide. Community assessment. And if Jim were giving this, uh, this would be, if, the, if he was giving this, he could really tell you a lot about community assessments, especially with global grants and how important they are. But for a district grant, I think a community assessment is just as important. Talk with your partners and members in the community. Think about all the people that you have in your club and all the resources. I know in my club, we have both school superintendents. We have the administrator of the hospital. You have people that are involved in a lot of organizations and talk to those people and they'll put you in touch with maybe the principals of a school or a nonprofit to see really what their needs are. I know our club did a project with a, a, an, an organization and we thought they needed gloves for the winter and they didn't because they already were getting those from somebody else. So I'm glad we didn't buy those and we went and did something else. So think about that because that's important to talk to your community partners. Um, like I mentioned, ass assess your club's resources and availability of potential partners that are already in your club. So go to your club and ask them what ideas they have. And maybe they've got something that you're not even thinking about. But choose a project that is based on what the community needs, not what you think they need. Next slide. Partners. Rotary does well with partnering with a lot of organizations. So how can partners help you make your project successful? Maybe they have the funds that you need to help do the project. Maybe they have the, the uh, knowledge on, um, on how to, uh, to work the project that you don't have. So these are good projects. And, you know, uh, one of the partners that I think about are if you're doing an international project, uh, Engineers Without Borders. You know, they have knowledge and you're, you don't. You, maybe you, you need that, uh, that, that uh, uh, information. So partners are wonderful. And I can tell you, uh, you just there's a lot of them out there. And Rotary loves partnering with other organizations. How do you identify potential partners? 
other Rotary clubs. That's a great source. I know in our community, we have three, uh, three Rotary clubs, and we're looking to all come together and do a project together for our community. The Knoxville clubs are really good about doing that. They've come up with all kinds of projects, and they work with an outbound exchange student. And they come together and they support and they work together and help fund and they do a district grant for an outbound exchange student, a child in need. It's just great to see clubs working together. Um, what about other nonprofits um, or government organizations in your area? You know, um, there's a lot of them out there. And I think as long as they have good reputations and they do things right, they can be great assets. Okay. Next slide. Project planning. Think about the way your club's doing projects right now in your club. Sometimes we see one person that's in charge of the project, but let's see what we can do about getting other people involved. So form a three-person grant committee. Just a suggestion. It could be more, but I think it's a great idea. Assign them a role. Maybe one person would be in charge of managing the funds. Maybe another person would do the site visits. If you're doing a project, uh, Jim had mentioned a playground a few minutes ago. Have somebody that goes and visits and maybe touches base with the school or the organization to make sure they don't need anything and see what your part can be in that. It's the club. And maybe another person's involved in helping get bids and helping try to find the right the best buys for the project. So those are just suggestions, but listen, there's all kinds of roles people can play, but give everybody a job instead of one person doing everything. You create a budget. Pat's going to give you some ideas on a budget here in a moment, and you want to make sure that you follow that budget and, um, and, 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 and create and know what you're spending. Create an implementation plan, steps, a timeline, when are you going to do this and when are you going to do the next step? So you want to make sure that you put together a plan and have a contingency plan. Bobby mentioned that earlier. When something happens, your project sometimes will change. That doesn't mean you can't do the project. You just need to make sure that we, uh, we know about it and make sure that we can help. And I know sometimes when you're in a project, I've had clubs say, well, we had some something that we were going to fund in the project. Someone else has stepped up and paid for it. Can we do something in addition to this that involves the, the uh, project? And yes, there's some things that you can do as long as it all pertains to the project that you're working on. Then I think the goal is to do it the most you can with it. Okay, the next slide. Creating a budget. You're going to hear this more from Pat. Make sure it's realistic. Competitive bidding. You want to make sure that you get the best prices that you can for your project. Reasonable prices. And I think that we're smart enough to understand that. Disclose potential or real conflicts of interest. You know, this is a question that comes up quite often, and I think that we need to think about this. I think the best definition for this, because there's Rotarians from that sit on boards and uh, of all, all these organizations and a lot of them we work with. But I think the most important uh, thing to think about is for conflicts of interest is that when you're dealing with the money, I think it's the person that uh, needs that everybody needs to be, cons uh, if there's a conflict, make sure that person is arm's length with the decisions on the financial part of it, I think is the most important part. And an example that I think of in my club uh, the uh, we do a lot of work with the Boys and Girls Club. Well, the uh, the director of the Boys and Girls Club is a member of my of our club. Does that mean we can't do any projects with the Boys and Girls Club? No, but we have to make sure that Derek is not involved in those money decisions, and he needs to put more of his staff involved in it instead of him having direct decision making. So. There's ways of working it because we're all involved in so many different organizations. And I think it's um, just something to be very, very cautious about. Next slide. There's a part where we have questions. If anybody has a question, if not, 
we're going to move forward with the forms and applying for a district grant. So then uh, we'll need that, uh, the form up, Greg. I think that's the next slide. But the learning objective is to be able to write a successful grant proposal and application and understand good stewardship practices. And Pat's going to talk to you a little bit about that on the form. I want, did want to mention Rachel Killebrew. She's uh, one of our grant writers, and she works with clubs all the time. And she would be here tonight, but she's um, she's had, uh, had a loss in her family. So I think she's moved. She's uh, out spending time with family. So keep um, Rachel and uh, your thoughts and prayers over the next few weeks. And she'll be back hopefully in the swing of things. And she's such a great asset as a grant writer. So we're ready for when, Greg, when you find that, we are on go. So the forms all can be found on the district website. Bobby talked a little bit about that. And, Pat, I'm going to turn it over to you. Pat does a wonderful job as our coordinator. And, Pat, thank you for the time and the volunteer work you spend with grants. Pat? Is Pat still on? Have we lost Pat? Yeah, it looks that way. I don't see her. Oh, okay. there she's there. Okay. Is she, she muted? Well, no, but she she was the one that was having all that. Yeah, both of her mics are open. Oh, well, this one's not. But... Okay. Well, I guess we'll just start. If Pat comes on there, be sure and let her know. She does a much better job with this form than I do. So... This is where well, there's two different like fats muted. Okay. There's two different forms while Greg's trying to help her out. There is a single club form, and then there is a multi, a multi-club form. So there's two forms that you'll see on the district uh, website. And the multi-club form was, of course, for clubs that are teaming up and doing projects together. And that will need a signature from the assistant governor. All these forms can be filled out online. As we go through, you'll see the amount. Let's go over the, you, where you just put your name. That's pretty simple right there. And this is the single form. The amount of the requested district grant funds. That's where you're going to put your the amount that you uh, that you are requesting. And then the, the amount that the, the clubs match. So you have to match the fu grant funds dollar for dollar. And then if there's some other sources, you would list those to come up with your total amount of your total project. So uh, let's just say if you have a $12,000 project and you do a, you request $5,000 and your club matches it uh, $5,000, and then the other source, you might have another donor that uh, another uh, entity that's going to give you two thousand, so that would total the twelve thousand. Keep going, Greg, if you don't care. Project description. This is the name of the project that we'll go by on the uh, on the application. I mean, on the on our application that we send into the Rotary Foundation. So, come up with a project name, and. Um, Jim had talked about playground. We did, I think it was listed as Rivermont Playground Project. So come up with a, a nice name for your project. And then we still would like to for you to choose what uh, focus area that you think your project will uh, fall under. Okay, keep going. Your project goals and measurable objectives. What is your project actually going to be doing? The location of your project, the need for your project. What is the need? Tell a story as you write this grant application. What your project actually is going to do and how many people and what the situation is. What makes you want to do this project? What is the need? And who will the prod number F, 
Who will the project impact? Describe the target group for the project and include the estimated number of people affected by the project. Some of these things you're going to see that when on the closing report, you're going to have to fill out and you might as well go ahead and fill them out right now on the application. Describe in a step-by-step -step fashion how the project will be conducted, who will do and what and when. And that is just what we would think, get the, just the step-by-step -step on how you're going to conduct the project and what their out, the project outcomes and impact describe how the project will benefit the community. You know, we talked a little bit about the uh, community assessment. If you've done that homework right, then that's going to that's going to talk to you about who in the community is going to be who's what's going to happen with the impact. The project financial control describe how you can demonstrate that rotary funds are being properly uh, properly used and and um, and it, it gives some examples. Does your pro, uh, do you have a committee? Have you gotten commit competitive bids? And this is where you would put that. We talked a little bit about sustainability, the life of your grant after the project is completed. And that's where you fill that out. Am I back on there? Are you back on here, Pat? Am I back on there? Am I back on there? I'm having all kinds of computer problems. Okay, well, I'll continue on. And if we can get you back on here in a minute, Pat, that'll be good too. So I guess we'll just move forward. So the timeline. Bobby talked a little bit about the timeline. So from now to the uh, now till the first of January, you can go ahead and submit. But this is actually what you're talking about, the timeline of your project. So the date you start. So we want to make sure that what Kat will do, what her committee will do, they will review all of the projects. And they'll get these projects all cleaned up to make sure that there's no questions about anything. And then we submit those to the Rotary Foundation for approval, like a block grant. So you do not you do not start your project until you receive a grant number back, because that will be the date that you can actually start your project. So any of the receipts that you turn in will have to be after the date of that approval. We had a project uh, that happened a few years ago where they started before and the Rotary Foundation would not allow us to use that um, that expenditure. And it was a large expenditure. So we had to go a different route and we were able to hopefully work on another help out on another project. It's a long story, but the, the whole the whole essence is do not start until you receive word from the district that gives you a grant number. It says Congratulations, your project has been approved by the Rotary Foundation, and now you can begin to start work. Non-financial Rotarian involvement. And this is where you would uh, talk about the involvement, and every project has to have Rotarian involvement. So if you're going to do something, make sure that you can show how your the Rotarians in your club have participated in some part of that project. Could be a volunteer day, could be if you're doing a, an education program, reading in the schools. How do you how how do Rotary, how have Rotarians been involved in this project? And they're gonna, we're gonna ask you that on the final report. Publicity. You know, we've really been pushing public image and how to publicize and show what our clubs are doing. This is a this is a question right here that is really important. How will you ensure that the general public knows this is a rotary project? You could be putting up a sign on the project, but provide the details on how you're going to publicize this project. Uh, responsible Rotarians. This is so important because there's a couple of places here that these people are the contacts between the district and your club. So the primary contact person will be the person, the first person that we will call if we have a question, right, where your report is or a question about the club. 
and the secondary contact person. So you have a, a primary and a secondary and make sure that all that information is correct. Some of the issues we've run into in this uh, section is that sometimes Rotarians move. And if that if someone moves and they're on this contact list, be sure and contact us and let us know that that person is no longer part of this project. And it's amazing how many times it will contact a club on a project and will call the primary person and they have no clue anything about the project. And sometimes the secondary doesn't. So make sure that you have the right people on these contacts. Okay. Cooperating organizations. So think about these organizations that you're going to work with. If it's the school system or if it's the Boys and Girls Club or if it's other organizations that you're going to be working with, make sure that you get a letter from the organization saying that they're excited about working with Rotary and that they would be responsible for the project at the school or the playground, part of the playground, they're going to maintain it. But make sure that your cooperating organization is involved and make sure that they uh, attach a letter of acceptance that they will be help, that they will help with project after projects finished. Okay, this is where the budget where we've talked a little bit about this. Make sure and explain the budget and make sure you, that you can, that anyone could, when we're reviewing the project, that we can understand the budget. So remember that the district grant funds have to be matched by the club funds. So this is where you would do that and make sure that you're, you've, you've done a good job with itemizing the amount of the expenses. So when your closing report comes in, it will match this budget best it could. Okay, Greg? Reports and authorization. Progress report is due in October, and the final report should be submitted within two months of the project's completion, but no later than May the 31st of 25. And we have to close out all of the of the grants for 24, 25 before before we can we have to close out one group of grants before the, the second group can be funded. So we want to make sure that we stay on target. We work on a 12-month period, and we have to make sure that all these grants are, are closed out so we can be funded for the next year's grant. So if your project's going to be, and you already know that it's going to be beyond May the 31st, then don't use that project. Is Don't apply for a grant that is going to exceed the time frame. And we would tell you that up front if you list it correctly right here on number 10. But the funds will not be released to the club unless these reports have been filed with the district grants committee. And all the receipts, copies of the receipts, uh, must be submitted with the final report. So keep good records, really good records, and that will be the success of your project so we can be sure and fund it. There is a checklist on the uh, that will just do nothing but help you. So it's on the website, and be sure to look at that, and it just kind of goes over the timelines and some of these things that we've already talked about. Certification uh, is right here on this application, and uh, the club president or the club president-elect, just check one or the other, needs to sign this. So it's showing that, you're, that the club is committing, not just one person or two, but the club is committing to these, this project, and they will support um, all of the works of the project. Okay? Uh, David. Yes. Uh, ju just a clarification. Okay, so if I complete, if, if, if our club com completes a project by December 15th, and turns in our report, once it is approved, we can get our matching funds or do we have yes. to wait till okay. Okay, what I well, no. If we've already have the funds, see the Rotary Foundation will send the funds for the total amount that we have that we our district has been qualified. 
and they send those to us on the district uh, on the district level. So Jennifer Campbell is our district treasurer. She will maintain the checks. She takes care of all the funding. So what happens, Becky, is when you finish your project, you submit the final report. We put it all together and make sure those receipts are good and everything. And there's no question. And then we have to submit all that to Jennifer Campbell. And Jennifer will then make sure that she's satisfied with it. And she will submit, uh, we will send you the check for the grant amount. But now remember, we have to have all the we have to have all the grants closed out by the previous year, and we would that time period before we can uh, we can't have two block grants open at one time. Is what I'm saying, right? Does that does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because we right now we we have the funds in our account for uh, for the twenty twenty for this year's grant. And so we've had two grants that have closed out so far. We've been able to go ahead and send them their funds. Okay, moving forward. If you'll go back to the slides and I wanna make sure I'm right on target. I don't wanna go too long. So we'll... Okay, keep going. We've already gone over that. Okay, that we've already gone over that. We've talked about the budget. This is an example, and you can look. Uh, you can go back and revisit this PowerPoint on the web on the uh, district website. And this just shows you some examples of what I'm what we're talking about 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 the itemized budget and grant expenditures. Okay, Greg. The district grants checklist, all the district grants and global grant reports are up to date. And is your club grant qualified? The first question is gonna ask, is your club qualified? So you have to have that qualification in first. It goes right down with some of the other questions that we've talked about. And so I think we can move forward. The next slide. Has someone else read your grant application before? Um, to make sure it's complete. You know, I think that this is such a good idea. So you write your grant application and have some other people read it to make sure because they would probably know more about the project than we would on the district level. So we want to make sure that when we read that grant, that we understand it. I think it's good to let other people in your club read it before you submit it. Does the timeline match the district grants timeline? We've already talked a little bit about that. And uh, do you describe how those in need will be helped? And is there Rotarian involvement? All those things we've already discussed, okay? Um, how can the benefit uh, how can the beneficiaries be uh, the benefits be sustained? Has the project chair been selected and the contact person in, uh, provided? So think about who's going who's going to be your project chair? And make sure it's someone that you see weekly at the meetings, someone that's involved, someone that will report in and let others be involved. And is your budget detailed and is it included? And if there's not enough space there, you can always attach a separate budget if you needed to to the application. Do all the, ex uh, do all the ex uh, expenses meet the grant restrictions? And there is a checklist on some of the requirements and some of the do's and don'ts that are, um, and that's on the website. Are all partners listed and do their contributions match the budget? Okay. Is the application signed by the president? We discussed that. And for a multi, I mentioned this earlier, but uh, for a multi-grant, a multi-club uh, project, we asked that the, um, that the, pre, uh, that the, um, district assistant governor sign off on it so the assistant governor will be aware what the clubs in his area are doing. Are all the letters of support from the cooperating organizations be included in the grant applications and have all the documents been copied for submitted to the grants committee? That's just common the way we work 
should be able to be working on projects anyway. Make sure you have copies of all the of all the uh, information, and you've submitted those to the district grants committee. Okay. Any questions on this section? And I wish that Pat could have talked to you about it. She could have done such a better job over that application than I did. But if you have any uh, questions, feel free to call me. I am an easy person to get in touch with, and I will answer your phone call. Any questions? David? Yes. There is a, it's, I'm going to stick to it in here. There's a question in the chat box that says, Sure, is go ahead. Makeup process, is there a makeup process if second club member could not make the training tonight? That's a good question. If you will contact me on an individual basis, I will help you with that because our goal, listen, we're all volunteers and sometimes that happens. Somebody might couldn't have made it tonight, but if you will contact me personally i will help you with that and make sure that we get your club qualified if i have i might have to do something on an individual basis but i'll be glad to work with you is that a good answer bobby okay. yes okay any other questions yes it's me Let's again i know i know okay. your voice becky go ahead <laughs> okay um, I'm we're doing a grant with Wesley House House. Okay, are they a cooperating organization? I think they would be a cooperating organization. Yes. So we need to get a letter. Yes. Okay. So the okay. recipient is a cooperating person. I think under that situation, I think that they, I would consider them, yes, cooperating organization, because you're working with that organization. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I think it would just be, I don't know exactly what you're going to, what the project will be, but basically what they're doing, they're accepting that you're going to be working with them on some projects and that they will maintain whatever the project results are. So I think it's a good idea to have them. Yeah, and it also is it's, and it past. also is a it's a good commitment for them too to say that what their part's going to be. Great, we'll do that. Okay. Any other questions? And and Becky's a grant a great grant writer. She would be good to, oh, to ask you. questions to. That's true. Anybody else before we move to the last section? Okay, Greg, I'm ready to start. And I was going to, this was going to be Pat section two, but we're going to continue moving right along. And some of this is just basically is going to be a little bit of a repetition and I'm going to move, move forward with it. Some of the objectives in this section is understand how to monitor the progress of your, uh, of your plan and identify the best practices for managing the funds and record keeping, which we talked about five years. Discuss the importance of evaluating a project and applying the lessons learned and understand the reporting requirements. Okay, moving on. So think about successful projects that you've had in your in your club. And think about if they've if they've all had these they, these 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 different bullets bullet points, personal contact. Did you have good personal contact with your successful project? Did you have good communication? What about your financial management? Would you improve on that if you had to do it over again? Record keeping, you have to keep good records and I just can't say enough for that. I'll tell you the way we do it. You, We want the club to keep good records. And then on the district level, we always keep a copy of what we get from you. And then I will send that, be sure we always get it electronically where I can email that to Jennifer Campbell, our treasurer, and then she keeps a copy. And I don't know if you know this, but our district has an auditing committee, financial auditing committee, and they will sometimes spot check and review our records to make sure that we've done what we said we were gonna do. And then uh, be sure that you follow the original plan 
or you update your plan. These are successful projects. And if you think about projects that you've had that have been successful in your club, they will meet all these, uh, these, uh, these points here. Next slide. After you finish your project, if it's an ongoing project, you make sure that you look to see if you could have done it better. So ongoing during the project implementation and project completion. Basic, the evaluation, is it based on the goals you set for the project? Did the project, is the project's outcome what you had hoped it was? Now, sometimes we have, it's, would you do the project again? I think that's really what the evaluation is. Assist with the reporting requirements. Make sure that you've done a good job with reporting all that need to be reported in all the in the in the final reports and in the mid-year reports. Use the findings to improve future projects and identify success successes you can uh, uh, that you can promote. You know, I think about ongoing projects. Some clubs have continued projects with certain organizations. And I think that once you build those relationships, that's what makes a good project. You build those relationships with these different groups and it becomes fun to do these projects because you're meeting a need and um, you, you're meeting a need that, that, they, that they really uh, can work with. Okay, the next slide. We talked about the district grants reports. We're going to go over that one more time because these are so important. But the progress report is due October the 1st. The target date for the grant completion is March the 31st. That should give you plenty of time to complete your project. And then you'll get your, your receipts together, your final reports, and you'll have those to us within two months of the project completion. If something happens and you see that's going to change, you let us know. And sometimes a project will not, you'll, you'll see it just no way it's going to happen. And if that's the case, then we can refund those projects for another grant. So don't hold another club up if you know that your project is not going to happen. Make sure that you, you're on time and you work with a timeline. The final report must be approved by the district grants uh, team before the district pays its share of the grants funding. Okay. This is something that you can read on the progress report. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but you know, with the progress report and the final report, pretty much the same form. So you can start answering the questions on your progress report from what you're going to do on your final report. But be sure when you send your progress report in, if you happen to send some information in showing what you've already spent, be sure and send that same amount in with the final report because we want to make sure that the final report has the total, everything in it that need, it needs to have. So when we submit that to the treasurer, she has everything in that one report in the final report. So the progress report will... Tell where you are in the project. Have you started it? What have you actually done? The status and what's been completed. Are you going to be able to stay on the timeline and the schedule for completion? Just common sense. District grant progress report sections, the different sections. You'll have the funding up to date, what you've actually spent the expenditures, the amount of the district your, the district grant funds you're expecting at the very end, and keep moving, Bobby. I think, I mean, uh, Greg, we're just moving right along. This is for the final report. Now, this is important. On the final report, you want to tell the outcomes of your project. So you re-put your project description, you relist that. Remember I mentioned the Rotarian participation? The question is going to be asked, how many Rotarians participated? So you want to make sure it doesn't have one or two. Make sure that you have a good number to show that your club has participated. And what have they done? What part did the participants do? 
did it pertain to the project? So the project's impact, how many non-Rotarians benefited from this project? And a good example would be if you were to put a well in, a, a well in how many people in that area are benefit, uh, benefit from the well or the water purification? If you're putting books in a, in a uh, helping fund books in a school library, how many students will read those books or how many students will have access? Expected long-term benefits. The project that you have, what will the impact be over the amount of time and how and that term of benefits? And the role of the cooperating organization. Did they participate well with you? Are they going to be able to take care of your project and what part are they going to actually play? Okay, Greg. Um, Dave. Yes. Uh, and I, I would encourage the club to find a role for Interact and uh, Rotaract clubs to participate. And I think that's a good idea. Uh, you know, uh, Interact and Rotaract clubs can be such a great partner in your projects. I mean, they can do some of, they love to get, to be involved. They like to do some of the groundwork. Is that what you're talking about, Becky, on being involved yes. in the project? Give us yes. an example. Give us a, a fast example. On, on, on Have you had an experience where the Interact Club or Rotaract Clubs participated in one of your projects? Yes, we're, we're doing a Wesley House, House Library. And the Interact students are helping us shelve all the books and categorize them so they, and they help paint the room see there you go they love to get involved in projects and that's a great way to get involved so think about your interact clubs and your rotaract clubs and I they're future they, rotarians oh yeah they they'll, will they'll outwork the rotarians and they might teach you a few things so that's good yes so we're talking about the final report sections, the funding, the expenditures, the amount of the district uh, grant that is requested. And we said that that has to be matched equally, at least equally with the um, the amount that you're going to, the, the club funds have, have to match the grant funds. So can you spend a lot more? Yes, you can. But just make sure that the grant amount that you're asking for is what the club has at least matched that amount for. And then the person that signs will certify that everything has been done properly and the club will back up the project and the reports and the receipts and all the money was spent well. And remember that the receipts, Pat made note of this, that the receipts must be sorted and labeled by the budget categories. And this makes it so much easier to read. So I like to see a grant report, a final report where I can go over the receipts and I look at the expenditure uh, section and they line up right as you go through. It might have A, B, C, D or one, two, three or four, whatever it is, but make sure that those match up. There's nothing worse than having to go through and try to figure out how the money was spent. So make sure you do that. And most clubs are, if you've been doing grants for a while, are really have really been good about labeling those and making sure that those expenditures match up. Okay, next slide. We've already gone over this. I don't think that we're going to need to look at this slide again, so we'll move on. Okay, are there any more questions? I know Becky had a question, but let's say, uh, this is a time if you've got a question, about anything that we've talked about, I think this is a good time to answer. If you've got a particular question on uh, one of your projects, this is a good time to ask it. Anything else that you want to ask about the pro the program, I mean, the uh, presentation that we've done this evening? Any questions? David, one question. Um, so I sure. know that the, uh, or October 1st, 2024, is the progress report due by? Is there any sort of pre thing to get an idea of like, hey, is this in the realm of what we can do? Like a pre approval process? Like, say we start. Sure. If you tomorrow. if you have an idea if you have an idea for a project, 
if you will send us something, maybe a paragraph or two and send it to us to say, this is what we're thinking about. You know, it's, it's amazing how you might have one idea on what you think you want to spend the money for, but sometimes we can look at it and say, well, what about if this fits better, that this might work with the grant? Is that kind of what you're asking? Well, that, and I knew we had did that three-year combined project for the big splash pad that we had finished. And what, a, what a great project, Todd. I'll tell you, that was a great project. And then we just yeah. had the big unveiling a few weeks ago and it was awesome. But I think we got lost in a year's time because we work a year out. And that's where right. with John being the president elect, I was like, we've got to you know, get both he and I on board to make sure we don't miss another window. But yeah. So do you are you so have you identified? I, I because when I, you guys were not in the uh, the last meeting we had for uh, for the qualifying like this meeting, you were not at the first. I called Gordon and talked to him. So have you already started thinking about your project for that you're going to submit for January? We did, and we're trying to collaborate with the city again because they usually throw a bunch of money at it with us as well. So right, and that's where I was like, well, I mean, are we going to fit in this timeline? But yeah, we've got some big fundraisers coming up just for that. And right. We're just going to prove it in the next, probably this month before Christmas. Okay, well, you know, if you want to send us something or if you want to contact me and I'll talk to you about it or whatever, but we want to, you know, just make sure it fits within that time frame. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Listen, your club does great projects. So they do such large projects. If you're ever in the, in the, uh, the Morristown area, go look at the Rotary Park and the Splash Pad and the Disc Park and all the great things that are there. I haven't I haven't been there myself, so I want to come and visit. Okay, any other questions? David. David Moore. I recognized you. Yeah, voice. Good honey, to David. See you. Hey, yes. you too. Any thoughts about multi-year? You've mentioned some multi-year projects, and I weren't sure if they were all within the grant or the grants was only one part and then the club did other things. But what are the thoughts about a multi-year project? Okay, multi-year projects. This is kind of the way we look at it. Okay, so if your club has a project that maybe has phases, maybe phase one, two, or three, those all have to be separate. So they, you know, they have to be submitted every year. So we can't, we really can't um, commit for three years, but we have to do those a year at a time. So if we know that you're going to have a project and you tell us it's a three-year project, then we'll try to work with you the best that we can, but we can't approve all three years at one time. We can only do one year at a time. It's like okay. the Morristown That's project. Helpful. They, The Morristown project, we did that in phases. And, you know, they were they were requesting pretty good chunks of money, it's 25000 20 or $25,000 a, a phase. And there were times that we didn't have that much money. So we, I, I, we yeah. were, I was working with Gordon on those projects. And so one year we were able to do 10000 One year we were able to do 20000 So we'll fund as much as we can for those different phases. But um, this is going to be a good year for – uh, we'll have that little extra money. And so I think this is a good year for, for some projects that if you've got a little larger project, that would be a good year to submit it. Does that answer your question, David? Yes, it does. But it brought up another question. In okay, general, well, let's hear it. In general, do you have an estimate of a, a grant range, money range that you would think would be good for clubs to do? Yeah. Okay. So we try on the application. We use five thousand dollars is kind of a a rough figure, but you can mm -hmm. ask for more. So some clubs, if you had a project that said that it's going to be twenty five thousand dollars, we're going to request it. That doesn't mean that we can fund the twenty five thousand dollars, but we try to let every club participate and have some participation. We want every club, at all possible, to get a grant. So what happens? This is we've done this with several large projects. For example, say if um, if uh, your club submitted David a project and it was for twenty five thousand dollars, and we said David, we can only fund ten thousand dollars of it. But at the end of the rotary year, as maybe there might be a handful of projects that might not happen, 
and maybe a club has to cancel a project. If we have any of those, if we have any extra funds that happen that occur or pop up, then we'll offer that to you for your project. So we might not fund the whole 25, but before the end of the year, we might be able to do another 5,000 or so dollars. Gotcha. Thank you, David. Okay. Anybody else? There was a question about receipts. We do ask for canceled checks and we do ask, uh, we have looked at, uh, we do accept uh, bank statements. So if you show that you've electronically done all your, all your banking, then if you could show us uh, basically that those monies have been spent, that's all that we, that we have to have for our, uh, before we submit it to Jennifer Cameron. And that's one of the requirements that we have. Any other questions? Bobby, anything else that you think that we need to talk about tonight? Well, I think I think you've covered the bases, David. Have Appreciate we about it. worn everybody out? It's it's 822. I'm just thankful that I didn't go over this time. But I really <laughs> wish that Pat would have been on board. Oh. Pat does such a great job. This is a great committee. And there's a lot of people involved in it. A lot of people read grants. And, and um, if you want to get involved more, listen, contact us. We, it's a big group, and we'd like to be as many people involved as we can. If you're interested in being a coordinator, if you're interested in being a grant reader, any of these things, we would be glad for you to uh, participate. So get in touch with Bobby or myself, and we'll be glad to help you. Um, Jim job, was on a Dave. few minutes ago, and if you're if you're interested in your club's doing a global grant, Jim Roxlow will help you. He will work through that grant with you and help you when you, when you submit it to the Rotary Foundation. I can almost bet you that it would be approved if it's been approved on the district level. But Jim does a great job, and if you've worked with uh, global grants before, uh, you'll find out that uh, Jim's a great asset. So I wanted to make sure and say that because this is district grants training and not global grant, but same qualification process, but just different forms. Okay, I'm finished unless anybody else. Contact me if you have other questions. Thank you again for letting us uh, go through this tonight with you. Hey, I Bobby? need Hey, Bobby, before people go, I want to check a couple names so that people get credit, okay? That's important. We want to make sure you get credit. Because I've been sending chats, but no one's answering. Um, Joshua, you don't have a last name in a club. Who you? Who are you? Joshua Hammer, Franklin County AM Rotary. <laughs> so you get to live with Al, eh? Hmm. Yeah, I got Al and David <laughs> both. <laughs> we don't talk about that publicly. I know. Okay. How about now, Becky? There's a Becky Duncan and there's a Becky. Is that the same person? We're the same one, and we're from Farragut. So who's there, Becky? Becky Duncan, and who else? Uh, Judith Bradbury. Oh, uh, okay. I got. Well, I think yeah. I, yeah, I've got you. Yeah, but I think I think Becky's working off of two different. Um, okay. things. That's what I'm the wondering. sound on my computer doesn't work, so I've got my phone for sound. Okay. Okay. Uh, Does this count as training for next year for me? For this year, yeah. I came twice. She's trying to <laughs> she's trying to get double up. You can only get counted once, Becky. We oh shut. Sure. We, we can't fudge. We can't fudge. Four way <laughs> test. Okay. How about um uh Frank Horton? Who are you with? Anybody know Frank Horton? Mount yeah, Juliet. Hey, Greg. Yeah, Greg. Mount Juliet Breakfast. Oh, he's with Breakfast too. Okay. Yes. And uh, what was it? I uh, iPad thirty nine. You told me who you are, but just tell me again. Uh, Evelyn Brown. 
Evelyn Brown. <laughs> Evelyn. Okay, yeah, I got you. Okay, I just wanted to be sure I didn't miss you. And uh, let's see, Franklin. All right, I and I just want to verify that uh, Tammy Kaufman, uh, Tammy Kaufman Magrum is not here. Is that correct? But I know that. Oh no, here you are, Tammy Magnum. I got you. Yeah, okay. I'm here. <laughs> okay, I yeah, you got your formal name over there. Okay, yeah, I, I yeah. see. Because um, I I saw that you were here from Livingston. Okay. Yeah. And um, ba -ba -bum. is Holly Jones here? From no, Severeville? Holly Jones is not here. You have Jill Dillner from Sevierville instead of Holly Jones. Okay, I, I've got you. Yeah, you're PE also, right? I am. And we have Toby Wagner from our club is our second. He's on here. Yeah, I've got Toby. I'm just right. looking at names I haven't checked, and I just want to be sure that... Yeah, you can just take her off of there. And Monty Ross never showed up, right? I didn't see him. And um, Bill Smolniki from Suburbville Sunrise. I don't think he's here. And let's see, Bruce Van Cleve and Kelly uh, fit to toe from Bearden. I didn't see either one of them here, but there are some other Bearden people here. So, um, okay, Bobby, I'm I'm done. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, somebody asked about the presentation. Uh, we will uh, we'll distribute it to the people that are on tonight, but we'll also post it on the district district website. So it'll be, a, be available to you in another place too if you if you need it. So thank again, you so thank much. Thank everybody Bobby. for coming. I think it I think it's been a great evening and uh, I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving and uh, joy, joy the rest of the week and the holiday. Cool. Thank you. Goodbye. Likewise, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Adios. Thank you. <laughs> Adios, Greg. Thank you, everybody, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Ciao. Um, but, um, Linda, David, Greg, yes. we'll stay on a sec. Okay. Well, there's and Tam. Pat, no, I actually Pat, see. I, yeah. See, uh, I've had trouble like Pat did, and it's just really frustrating when that happens. Yeah, the but, feedback uh, is yeah, very here with the satellite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was causing really that feedback? Everybody's. I don't know. She might was she on her phone or something, and there was something going on. She had feedback from something. So I don't know. We'll have to but see. Appreciate everybody's work on this. And Greg, what's the best way to send out the presentation to the participants? Well, you, I, you know, you can actually. Um,